Actual AS law is around the corner, and some people are still having trouble with answering AS law paper to data response. Welcome to the A-Level Law Essay Practice channel. If you are still struggling with your A-Level law paper, then stick around. In today's video, I'm going to be sharing with you my thoughts about the main problems with AS law paper 2 data response and why is it that some who have sat for it would claim that they didn't do well or at least didn't do as well as they might have expected. If you're already aware of the main problems with paper 2 and are more interested to get some tips and tricks on how to score for your paper 2, then do check out my video on tips and tricks to score in your AS law paper 2 data response in the description below. Other than that, if you are confused or have questions about how AS Law Paper 2 is examined, you should also check out the aforementioned video as well. Before I begin, please do subscribe to my channel for more video guides and other interesting topics that may or may not relate to law as a subject of study. With that said, let's start off with the first problem with AS Law Paper 2 data response. Number 1. The Random Legal Topics the first problem is probably the main problem with the paper, and that is the randomness of the paper. That the questions that come out for sub-questions A through C are usually questions relating to legal studies, which you probably have never come across before throughout your studies, as it is neither in your textbook nor in the A-level law syllabus. Any scenario and any legal topic might pop up, and it is up to you to read analyze and answer the question spontaneously while still being on the clock, meaning one and a half hours. I always tell my students that AS Law Paper 2 is comparable to an English comprehension or the reading section of an English test which tests the candidate's ability to comprehend the text given in order to answer the question that may or may not be related to the given text in the test. So, other than having to answer spontaneously, the candidate must also be able to understand, analyze, and answer the question correctly despite not being exposed to the topic in question before as the given topic, though may relate to legal studies, is completely random. It is with this problem of randomness that I personally feel that no degree of preparation can actually prepare a student for the paper. This is one of the reasons why I do not make videos analyzing and predicting what will come out for upcoming AS Paper 2 examination settings, but make videos for other papers such as Paper 1, 3, and 4. If you are interested to know what I have analyzed and predicted, please do check them out in the description below. However, there are ways for which you can still prepare yourself disregarding. This is something which I will address in my other video on the tips and tricks to score in your AS Law Paper 2 data response. Your luck is also very much an important factor when it comes to sitting for Paper 2. Imagine if luck is not on your side, and both questions in the paper is something which you are not prepared for as the given topic is not just random but also possibly incomprehensible. In that situation, you are probably going to flung your entire Paper 2 disregarding how well you may have thought you have done in your Paper 1. Number 2. The Subjectivity of the Answer During discussions with my students throughout my teaching career, I always tend to discuss paper 2 as it is first, meaning without actually referring to the marking scheme. And so, whatever answers that we come up with in the class is usually either accepted or not accepted after we've concluded our discussion of the question. In order to verify our answers, we will then go on to check on the marking scheme provided for the particular question that we have discussed. More often than not, we tend to come across a problem whereby some part of the answer in the marking scheme totally contradicts with our initial answer. Of course, after much debate, we conclude that perhaps the marking scheme is correct, disregarding. But there are times when the marking scheme just doesn't make sense, as it is evident that marking schemes provided by Cambridge examiners are becoming increasingly vague and uncertain. It is like as if they couldn't be bothered anymore about the answer and so leave it to the examiners to mark and grade it however it is that they like. Because of the vagueness of the marking scheme provided and also sometimes because of the fact that the answer is very much strictly one-sided without considering the variety of ways for which a student can answer it due to the probable subjectivity of the answer in relation to the question, 
a student's answer is inevitably wrong. It would seem that only those who so happen to answer according to the whims of the examiner, he or she will score well for that particular answer or answers. In this situation, a student's luck would again play a very big part in ensuring that marks are obtained for the effort of answering the question given. What I always tell my students about studying law is that there is the tendency for there to be no actual conclusive answer for whatever legal discussions we may have. In math, 1 plus 1 is always 2, but in law, 1 plus 1 can be whatever it is that you want it to be. And that is the beauty of legal studies and its possible application in real life. In fact, judges in court can be a confused bunch disregarding the supposed strict principle of judicial precedent. Therefore, I feel that it would in many ways be unfair for examiners to penalize students just for having a differing opinion on the legal matter, or a different answer that is whether certainly or not certainly provided for in the marking scheme. A wee disclaimer here, I am not outrightly condemning our dear examiners from around the world as I'm sure they've done their best. I'm just highlighting some of the problems that students might face when sitting for this paper, disregarding its flaws as an examination. Before we continue with the next problem, I would like to share with you what else I do other than making education videos for your viewing. I'm a law lecturer, and so of course I do teach various law subjects and have connections with other lecturers and tutors who also provide the same services to those who need private and home tutoring to prepare them for their exams. Apart from that, I also provide free services to get you in touch with any tutor of any learning subject of your desire and of any education value. So if you are living within Malaysia and do need a private tutor for yourself or for loved ones, do get in touch with me about it and I'll see if I can hook you up with a suitable tutor who would be glad to provide you with their services. You may find my email address in the About section of my channel or in the description below this video. Now, let's get back to the video on AS Law Paper 2 Data Response. Number 3. Not being able to comprehend the source material. Just like an English comprehension test, the nature of its randomness would also mean that you may not be able to understand some of the terms phrases or sentence structures used in context within the source material. When that happens, a candidate will be pulling their hair just to figure out what does that particular subsection within the source material which is part of an Act of Parliament mean. As we know, the wordings used in a legal document is very much technical as it was written with precision so as to do away with ambiguity, but at the same time can still be very ambiguous to the extent where it will lead to confusion and absurdity. Due to students not being able to accurately understand what is being written in the source material, they would inevitably apply it to the question wrongly and so answer it wrongly. When the particular term, phrase or sentence structure is misunderstood and applied wrongly, then there is a tendency for the rest of the answer from the other sub-questions to be completely wrong as well. It is because of this, that students would fail miserably in their paper 2, disregarding how well they have done for their sub-questions D, which is the essay writing part of the paper. And it is also because of this that it will pull down the marks obtained in their paper 1. Even though paper 2 only accounts for 40% of the entire AS law examination, it, would be done, it should be done very well if you are looking to score an overall A grade. I always have students who are good but do not always quite make it to an overall grade A simply because of their paper 2. For example, if you were to score very high for paper 1 with an A grade but your paper 2 is a B grade, then there's a possibility for you to only attain an overall high B grade. Therefore, as emphasized in the previous two problems, your luck really plays a large part in scoring well for your paper 2 and also the overall AS law or even A level law altogether because every paper needs to be done well and scored well and high in order to attain the overall A grade for your A level law paper. 
Number 4. Not checking out my video on tips and tricks to score in your AS Law Paper 2 data response. If you want to know how to beat the problems in AS Law Paper 2 data response, you should be checking out my other video regarding Paper 2. You may find it in the description below this video. Apart from that, I will also be making a video on actually answering a Paper 2 question with sample answers from me. So, if you are looking forward to that, please do subscribe to my channel and hit the bell button to be notified once a new video is out for your view. Do check out my video guides and essay samples which I have published in this channel. That's all for this video. If you find the information useful, please consider leaving a like to this video and share it with your friends so that they may also benefit from my work. Thank you for watching and I hope to see you again next time.